All right, so there we have got uh, a typical exam question uh, on our exponents and logarithms, uh, November 2018 exam, which is uh, important that we do understand how some of these typical questions uh, might be given as. So we have got uh, a lot of things to consider here, the part of algebra. If you consider the first part, simplify. So considering this part, we can see it's a combination of the algebra. We have got uh, algebraic expressions. We also have the exponents. This part of the 60 root, the square root, everything this is from our exponents. So from this part that we are given, if we were to rewrite this part, all right, the first part we can just maybe rewrite as it is, uh, this is 3x squared minus 2x minus 1 to the exponent of minus 3 over 2. Then this, there's a square root, the cube root, remember from your laws of exponents. If you are given x, uh, to the exponent of a over b like this, this will be the b root of x to the exponent of a. If you're just given, maybe this is x to the exponent of one over n like this, this is simply uh, the nth root of x. So that is, if you're given the cube root, you can consider just like uh, this condition that you're given where there's just a single uh, part that we have exponent is one we are not having any other term or any other number to consider there so meaning to say this can be reversed to exponent of one over n to the exponent of one over what is inside of the the root sign inside of the root sign there's a three so this can be written as nine x squared plus six x plus one like this which is to the exponent of one over n, which is one over three. So this, the square root, the square root, it means there is a two there. So this is going to be written as minus one over two from a over b uh, concept. So that is x minus one to the exponent of minus one over two. Whenever you see a square root, there is a two inside, okay? Then this is a six, then the exponent is just a one. So meaning to say that's a product, all right? So just gonna even put a product, it's one and the same thing. So that is three X plus one to the exponent of what? One over six. So this is one over six like this. So as we can see that uh, from this condition that we have, they are exponents. So definitely we need to use our laws of exponents, consider is it the multiplication? If the bases are, are the same, we are going to uh, considering adding the exponents. Is it division? Uh, when you are dividing the bases, which are the same, you are going to consider subtracting all that part. But for us to have this or to properly see this, we must have these in simplest form. And the simplest form is to factorize. We have to factorize this. We must factorize. By factorizing, we are writing these in simplest form. So we are going to factorize our algebraic expressions. Uh, 3x squared minus 2x minus 1. Remember, you multiply the first term to the last term. That is minus 3x squared. So you need two terms that will give us, that are going to add up to minus three X squared if you multiply. I mean, you must get minus three X squared, but if you add, you must have this middle term. So you simply need product. You are going to need what? The product, the multiples, uh, which are the factors. I mean, the products or the factors, two factors that you consider, you multiply, you obtain minus three X squared. You add those factors, you obtain a positive uh, 2x. Are we having such factors? Minus 3x, when you multiply it to x, that's minus 3x squared. If you add minus 3 plus x, that is minus 3 plus 1, that's a positive. That's a negative 2 exactly, which is the one that you have. If it was a positive 3x, 
and a minus 1x, if you add, you are going to obtain a positive 2x if you add. But if you add these two, you obtain minus 2x, which is exactly the one that we need here. So these are the two terms that we are going to substitute in place of the middle term, 3x squared, then the two terms to replace the middle term, that is minus 3x plus 1x, which is same as x or just 1x minus 1. So remember by grouping, if you are given four terms like this, these terms are four, there are four terms. We can group these into two and factor out what is common for the first two terms. The highest common factor between these two numbers, that is three, between the letters, that is gonna be three X. So let's divide three X squared divided to three X. That will be an X there. If so, three X squared divided to three X, this one and this one cancels. There are two X's, this is one, so it cancels. You remain with one X minus three X and X cancels, that's minus one. What are we going to factor out between these two so that we have the same bracket as x minus one? One is common, so we're gonna to have to factor out plus one so that it remains exactly as x minus one. So one x divided to x, that is x minus one and one, that is gonna be a minus one. The two brackets are the same, the x minus one, you factor out the common bracket, which is x minus one remaining with three x plus one. So this is 3x plus 1 as, at the end. So from the two, uh, from the, the, this expression that we had, we are obtaining two brackets, which is the same thing that you are supposed to apply on this part of 9x squared plus 6x plus 1. Factorize. That is to express in simplest form as the factors. All right, so we are going to factorize just like uh, this part. But if you understand that one, you can see that it's a perfect square uh, expression. But if you do not understand that it's a perfect square, then you have to apply the same way as we factorize this. 9x squared plus 6x plus 1. Remember, you just multiply first and last. That will be 9x squared. Are we having two factors, the products, two terms that you multiply? to obtain a positive 9x squared. But when you add, you're going to obtain a positive 3x, a positive uh, 6x. So there we've got 3x and 3x. Multiply, that's a uh, positive 9x squared. If you add, that is going to be a positive 6x. So these are the terms that we are going to substitute into the middle term, that is 9x squared in place of 6x, we are going to substitute 3x plus 3x plus a one, which is our last term. Then by grouping, just like the previous case, 9x squared plus 3x, are we having the highest common factor? Three is gonna be highest common factor with x. 9x squared divided to 3x, that is gonna give us 3x, 3x and 3x cancels, that's plus one. Already, we can see that the last part is having 3x plus 1, which is the same as this bracket. So what are we going to factor out so that we remain with exactly the 3x plus 1, as we can see here? We are going to factor out a plus 1. A plus 1 does not affect anything. 3 divided to 1, it is just going to be 3x. 1 and 1 is going to be 1. It does not affect anything. So you factor out it as a positive 1. The bracket of 3x plus 1 and 3x plus 1 are the same. So we are going to factor out the common bracket remaining with 3x plus 1. So as we can see, these two brackets, are like, like I said, you could have just factorized this direct. It's a perfect square expression. Uh, remember, just like 2 times 2 being the same as 2 squared. If the two brackets are the same, also you can write this as 3x plus 1 to the exponent of a two. We are multiplying two brackets, which are the same. So this is what we have. We factorized each and every part. So this is supposed to be raised to the exponent of minus three over two. But remember, if you are given x, y like this to the exponent of n, each and every part is raised to the exponent of n. 
So meaning to say the two brackets that you're going to have in place of this expression, they were going to be all affected by minus three over two, which is our exponent. So these are the two brackets that are replacing the three X squared, whatever that we're we we having two, two brackets. So it's just like two terms raised to a single exponent. What is going to happen? Each part is going to be affected by that exponent, X minus one to the exponent of minus three over two. Also the part of three X, three X plus one also affected with minus three over two from this law that is we can expand uh, in that manner, each and every part raised to the exponent of n. In this case, there are two brackets that we obtained from 9x squared, but we managed to just write this as a single bracket to the exponent of 2. So we're going to substitute as it is 3x plus 1 raised to the exponent of 2, then also raised to the exponent of a third. Remember, an exponent exponent multiplies. So if you multiply, two and a third, that will be two thirds. So we are now having this as a single term, three X plus one to the exponent of two thirds. So take note this, there was a two on the exponent, then multiplying the one over three. All right, this is affecting uh, the denominator, which is everything as it is, uh, it is in simplest form. There is nothing that you're gonna consider like to simplify or to factorize it's already in simplest form all we now what we need is to apply our laws now we can consider the laws of exponents since we can see that the denominator i mean the the brackets that we are seeing there are some brackets which are actually the same so it is like the bases which are the same well, if you are multiplying what are you going to do so are we having that condition? There is an X minus one, there's an X minus one. What is happening between these two? We are dividing. A division, what is going to happen? You subtract, because the bases are the same, you subtract the exponent. So that's X minus one as the same base to the exponent of minus three over two. Then we subtract. What are we going to subtract? Minus a half. So this is minus one over two. All right, let us consider what is happening uh, on the bracket of 3x plus 1 because we also see that there's a bracket of uh, 3x plus 1 here. There's a 3x plus 1, also a 3x plus 1, also a 3x plus 1. So in the numerator, the 3x plus 1, it's a product here. This one, it's a product. We are multiplying. The bases are the same. You are multiplying. What are you supposed to do? Add the exponents. So meaning to say we are going to have 3x plus 1 to the exponent of what? Minus 3 over 2. We add the exponent of 2 over 3. The numerator part, the numerator part there, we are, we are multiplying. But whatever that you're going to have is going to be divided to this. It's just like what we have on x minus 1. It's a division. So a division, what, do, what is that you're going to do? You subtract the exponents. So you're going to subtract one over six, everything under three X plus one, everything under three X plus one. So this is it. So this is now you and uh, your calculator, X minus one, simplify minus three uh, over two, minus minus a half. This is going to give us a minus one. Then if you add and subtract this, we are going to have three uh, X plus one to the exponent of minus one also. Remember from our laws of exponents to the exponent of negative one, x to the exponent of negative one simply means one over x. So this is to say we have got a one over here to remove this negative exponent. That is, we've got one over x minus one multiplying one over, there's a negative exponent. So that is one over three x plus one. So we are back to a normal multiplication, multiplying. Uh, the numerators together, one times one, that is going to be a one. Everything over, multiply the denominators together, that is we've got the two brackets, the bracket of x minus one and the bracket of three x plus one. So this is what you're going to have at the end. So considering this, 
you can see that the laws of exponents also can be applied in algebra, the part of algebra. So what is it that you need in your algebra to write these expressions in simplest form? Factorize whatever that you're given. You're supposed to write it in simplest form. Factorize everything that you're given. Apply the laws of exponents. So this is a typical uh, exam question whereby you have to apply two things at the same time. You are working with algebra at the same time, minding that this is under exponents where the laws of exponents are supposed to be applied once the bases are the same. So if the brackets are the same, it's the same as there is x, it's the same as is just x to the exponent of minus three over two over x to the exponent of minus one over two. The brackets are the same. So those are the bases, just like the bases that you are considering as a single term. All right, so this is what we had. Uh, considering 2.12, you're going to have the same condition. Just trying to write these uh, in the simplest format, all right? So 25, we know this is as a prime number. That is 5 to the power of 2 to the exponent of 2x minus 1. Then 1 over 5, I talked about this. 1 over x is same as x to the exponent of minus 1. So that is 1 over 5 is 5 to the exponent of minus 1. Then they were given 5 to the exponent of 3x plus 1 times 5 to the exponent of x minus 2. Considering uh, that these bases are of 5, you can consider to multiply uh, on that part. Then you add the exponents, which is fine. Take note, there's an exponent of 2. You can even simplify these two, expand everything. 5 to the exponent of 2 expands everything. That is 2 times 2. You've got 4x minus 1, which is going to be minus 2, times 5 to the exponent of minus 1. Then this is 5 to the exponent of 3x plus 1 times uh, 5 to the exponent of minus 2, x minus 2. So considering that you are multiplying, because on top you're multiplying, I said you're going to add the exponents. The bases are the same. So you add the exponents. That is 4x minus 2. Then we add minus 1. So if you are to add a minus 1, the same thing here you are multiplying. So that means you are going to add 5 to the exponent of 3x plus 1. Then we add the exponent that you are given, which is x minus 2. All right. So let us consider what we're going to have at the end. Plus and minus, that's a minus one. So meaning to say this is going to give us five to the exponent of 4x minus two minus one, which is minus three. Then this will be five to the exponent. You can even collect like terms here. Three and one, that is 3x plus 1x, which is going to be 4x. 1 minus 2, which is minus 1. So all this you have to consider properly. You, you could have just simplified everything at once. If you understand your laws, guys, there's no need. You can even avoid working stage by stage, simplify everything at once. But in this condition, as you can see, now we are just left with a division. So a division, if the bases are the same, what are you going to do? You subtract. So this is 5 to the exponent of 4x minus 3. You are going to subtract. What is it that you are going to subtract? This is an expression. It's not a term. So you must write it in a bracket, 4x minus 1, to show that the negative is supposed to expand everything. So you're supposed to be careful when you're given an expression. It's different like you're just given uh, a term where you just subtract minus uh, 4x. There is an expression, the negative is going to affect each and every part inside of the bracket. 5 to the exponent of minus, uh, 4x minus 3, then we affect this bracket by a negative, just like uh, as we understand, just there's a negative 1 there. So it's negative 1 times 4, which is negative 4x, negative 1 times a negative, which is a positive 1. So collecting the terms of x, the 4x and the 4x was going to cancel. You are left with 5 to the exponent of minus 3 plus 1, which is minus 2. And this is same as 1 over 5 squared. Remember to remove a negative, which is same as uh, 25, 1 over 25.
just like that. Now, all these eggs that we had eliminated from the laws that we had simplifying the laws. So just apply the laws properly. Apply the laws that you're given of exponent, each and every law that you're given there. That is the idea. All right, let us consider 2.2. Solve for x. So they were given a logarithmic equation. Uh, solve for x, and that is 8 marks. So actually, uh, I don't see this 8 marks here because, uh, anyways, let us see. The logarithm of 3 to the exponent of x minus 3 to the exponent of 2 minus x like this, it is equal to the log of four. We cannot simplify this. Let us just write log four, but there you are given a log two over log four base four. Remember the logarithm of A in the base of A is equal to one. So if you're given log four base four, it means there's a one. So it's log two over one. Just like X over one, it is X. So log two over one, it is same as what? It is same as log two. So this is same as there is a log two there. This whole part here, it's log two. Log two over log four base four. Log four base four is same as one. So meaning to say, uh, there's nothing there that you're given. So remember, you're supposed to solve. And to solve, you must consider uh, that on the logarithms, it is important that you do understand the logarithm of A to be equal to the logarithm of B. And these bases are the same you are in the base of 10 or in the base of X, whatever base that you're given. If these two are the same, it is by default that this A is equal to B. Since the log base 10, the log base 10 are the same, A must be equal to B. So in order for us to consider this idea, you must have a single log, just like what you're given on the left-hand side. This is a single logarithm. In the base of 10, we are not given the base, so it means we are in the base of 10 if the base is not indicated. So on the left-hand side, already you've got a single logarithm, the logarithm of 3 to the exponent of x minus 1, uh, minus 3 to the exponent of 2 minus x, everything in the base, it's a, it's a single log. But here it's not, because there's a log, here there's another log. So considering this to be a single logarithm, remember that if you're adding your logarithms, the bases are the same. You multiply uh, the numbers. The logarithm of A in the base of 10 plus the logarithm of B in the base of 10 is simply the logarithm of AB. So you're going to multiply 2 and 4. So meaning to say this was supposed to be the logarithm of 4 times 2 in the base of 10. And what is 4 times 2? That is 8. So that's the logarithm of 8 in the base of 10. If the base is not given, it means you are referring to the base of 10. Now let's apply this idea that I'm referring, that if the logarithms truly are in the same base, truly are in the same base and they are equal, like you are given this is equal to this in the same base, it is therefore follows that A is equal to B by default. The logarithm base of 10, the logarithm of base 10, it means these two are equal. We no longer have a log in this case. We no longer have a log. It's not log A is equal to log B. No, it's A is equal. The log is no longer. A is equal to B. There is no log here. So we are not supposed to have a log here. No. So think of this question. They just wanted to disrupt everything with this whole party. The question was supposed to be given like this. This was supposed to be your normal question. Solve for X. It was just supposed to be like this. They were not supposed to even if this log, all this is to test us. Do you understand that if a log and a log are the, are the same, you can take A to be equal to B. So imagine you are given this equation. How are you going to solve this? It's, this is not a log now. It's an exponential equation, this one. Forget about the logarithms now. These are exponents. Remember how you solve your exponents, uh, your exponential equations. Uh, we can consider this uh, three to the exponent of x minus three to the exponent of two minus x is equal to eight. These three to the exponent of x, which can, which is um, actually meaning to say this was 
a subtract like you are, you are dividing and for you to subtract like this, you were having three to the exponent of two over three to the exponent. This is the one that made you to subtract, remember, before. So you can separate the way that it was before. Three to the exponent of two over three to the exponent of x is equal to eight. As you can see, we now have a fraction from this and three to the exponent of two, uh, this three to the exponent of two that we have here, are the same as a nine. Okay. Like I was saying, as we can see, we now have a fraction, both this is the same as over one, this is the same as over one. So you can consider to say, as I'm given a fraction, I have to remove the fraction. And how do you remove the fraction? You have to consider what is the LCD of everything, which is three to the exponent of X. Multiplying each and every term by the LCD, each and every term by the LCD, each and every term by the LCD. 3 to the exponent of x times 3 to the exponent of x. It is simply 3 to the exponent of x squared. This part and this part was going to cancel. Minus 9 is equal to 8 times 3 to the exponent of x. As we can see, this is a quadratic equation, which is actually a disguised quadratic equation. This is a quadratic equation, but just it, it disguised with the 3 to the exponent of x. Take it this side and see what I'm trying to say. 3 to the exponent of x raised to the exponent of 2 minus 8 times 3 to the exponent of x. Already there's a minus 9 on the left-hand side is equal to 0. This is a normal quadratic equation that we are used to. ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. As you can see, the 3x raised to the exponent of 2. This is a 3x raised to the exponent of 1. To, to the exponent of 1, just like here, b, the x, the x. The 3 to the exponent of x. So if you do not understand this, just introduce a certain letter of your choice. Let k be equal to 3 to the exponent of x. So that in place of this, you can properly see that it's a quadratic so in place of 3 to the exponent of x, if we are to substitute k, this is going to be k squared minus 8, 3 to the exponent of x represented with k. So that is 8k minus 9 is equal to 0. As you can see, that's a normal quadratic equation. But it is just disguised with this, 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 3 to the exponent of x. How do we solve? That is your option now. Using the quadratic formula, is it by factorization? Using factorization, just taking advantage that the coefficient of x of k squared there is one. When I have two brackets, a k here, a k, and consider, remember, factors or the products of negative nine. So you're going to need the factors or the products of negative nine, which will add up to a minus eight. So there we think of negative nine and a one. The product, negative nine. The sum, negative eight. So it's a trial and error you try is which part, when you multiply, you obtain a negative nine, but when you add, you must obtain a negative eight, not a positive eight, but you must obtain a negative. So the one that is gonna give us a negative, if you add, is the minus nine and the minus one. So minus nine uh, and the plus one. So that means K is equal to nine or K is equal to minus one if we're to transpose to the other side of the equation. So remember K is not part of our equation. We are not having K. The equation that we had, it was having X. So we must find X, not K. K is something that we introduced. Let K be equal to this. So at the end, do not forget that what you need is X, not K. So we are going to introduce, we are going to uh, bring back uh, the statement that we had K is equal to three to the exponent of X. So it means three to the exponent of X is equal to K, which is nine, or three to the exponent of X is equal to K, which is minus one. So now we can solve for X. Remember your exponents, if the bases are the same, we can consider to say also the powers will be the same. So nine in the base of three is three to the power of two. That means the bases are the same. So X is equal to what? X must be equal to two. 
Is it possible for us to have a number in the best of three raised to a certain power and obtain a minus one? This is totally impossible. So it means minus one cannot be written in the best of three. We cannot write minus one in the best of three. If it was just a one, it was possible because we know that any number to the power of zero gives us a one, but minus one, it's impossible. So in this case, you cannot simplify this whole part of our uh, equation. So we can consider this not to be applicable. There is no solution there. But this one is going to be the X that we need. Uh, we have got a solution where X is equivalent to what? Where X is equivalent to two. So these are the typical questions that you might be given. All that you need to do is to consider your laws Everything, as you can see, this question, it was all about the laws. Everything that you have here, it's all about the laws. The logarithms, they played a role in formulating an equation, just as we know that from our exponents, if the bases are the same, to consider that this is equal to this. If As long as these bases are the same, and you're saying they are equal, by default, automatically A will be equal to B. The same also with the log. If the log and the base, the log and the base are the same. Therefore, these two will be equal. So by forming an equation from that statement, you start from there. What type of an equation am I having? How do I solve this equation? That is the idea there. From there, you can solve your equation as... Uh, you are given, we do not know, is going to be an exponential. Is it going to be a quadratic equation? Is it going to be a linear equation? We do not know. What is formulated from that statement is the one that you work with. Maybe you are given uh, the logarithm. Maybe you have got a, a quadratic. You do not know. Which is equal to maybe log 2. In the case that the bases are the same, whatever that you have, this means this whole part and this part will be equal. So x squared plus 3x plus 1 must be equal to 2. What type of an equation have you formed after? This is what I'm trying to say. Is it a quadratic? Is it an exponential? Is it a linear equation? You consider. You must know your types. Uh, the types of equations that you have. Uh, like uh, which type of equation am I working with? That is the whole idea of equations. So that was it. Um, on this question, uh, as you can see, uh, these questions, they are actually very, very important for us to work with. Uh, I would encourage you to revise these typical questions. These ones, they can strain you uh, just to make sure you know the basics. All the basics allows you to, to go back to all the basics of your exponents, the basics of your logarithms. That is uh, this typical question like this one. So more questions to come till we meet again.